We are finally, finally finished the carding stage of the fleece. Uh, one thing I have learned with this fleece is, um, if it were for the fact that I'm doing this video as a whole series, I may have kind of disposed of a lot more of this fleece than what I did, but I'm really trying to take you through the stages right to the end where we see how much finished product we got out of one sheep fleece. Here we have a pile of the carded fleece. Uh, the cats are very tempted to destroy this, so we're going to try and be quick. <laughs> but this is approximately what I think I'm going to need to do a whole spindle of yarn. Uh, a medium weight yarn for mittens, things like that. Uh, one of the things, um, as I just mentioned, is there is a lot of matter still in these. You can see bits of hay, bits of burrs, bits of seeds. It's been a bit of a tedious task picking out seeds. One thing I would definitely recommend is make sure your sheep aren't in the seeds. <laughs> From this stage here, we've got about six bats in this pile. Uh, what I want to do is kind of take them to a more manageable roving. This is how they come off of the drum carter. And I just kind of take it and you eventually learn whereabouts you need to grab in order to just stretch it out. And then I go down to the next one. This is our first stretch. So you're gonna do this all the way along your batting until you've got, I skipped ahead and did this so that it would speed things along. You're going to have that. And again, we are going to stretch this out to an even more manageable roving. So kind of each of those, at each of those puffs, you're tugging again. This further aligns the fibers and also just makes it a lot more manageable when you spin. Now, by no means am I a professional spinner. I am self-taught, <laughs> thanks to YouTube, I suppose, in a lot of ways. That is the process that I use, whether it is correct or not. It has worked for me for a few years now. I've jumped ahead again and made a full roving, ready for spinning. It will look like that. Every, every Icelandic fleece is a little bit different, and this one's got quite a lot of bobbly, really, really light um, fleece in there, which is super soft and wonderful, but I'm not 100% sure it's going to spin the most spectacular. So I work on a standard Ashford spinning wheel. Uh, there's many different types of spinning wheels, so if you're thinking about getting into that, I would definitely recommend going to something where you can try a bunch of different kinds to figure out what works with you. I also know I don't sit at the spinning wheel the way a lot of people do. A lot of people face the spinning wheel like so. I face parallel with the wheel. I find that easier for feeding the fleece in for myself. But we have our starter string. I don't know, it probably has a really fancy technical name, but I don't know what it is. Just a piece of acrylic so that the wool does not stick to it. And we fed it through and we are ready to start our roving. Now, I just pull this a little bit thinner and loop it through. There we are, loop it through like that and bend it over. And that is going to be our tie-on. And you can see that does not come off there. Now we need to get the wheel I'm moving. So you always work your spinning wheel in the same direction. So I take this to get a start, spin it clockwise, and get it going using the foot pedal. As it spins, it's going to start feeding in. You just kind of tug. I always keep my thumb and pointer finger there. And gently pull back. The first few times it does not always go so smoothly. And you get a feel for what you need to have there in order to keep the uh, yarn somewhat consistent in um, thickness. See, I got a little thick there. Sometimes, too, if I just let the wheel stop, you can come back to those areas that get a little thick and just give them a little extra twist with your fingers. See, often that is that light, fluffy fleece kind of just gets caught in there. And you can see that evened right back out. I am spinning, like I say, a medium yarn and it's a lopy style. So I do not need to ply this. Uh, this will be a single strand. Uh, you can spin it thinner and do a double ply or a triple ply even. Uh, but this is kind of what I standard work in. 
One thing I should also mention as I'm spinning here is uh, even though this fleece was a little more time consuming to get to this stage of readiness, uh, it is still more than valuable as, for personal use. Just because I say I may have thrown some away, that is just because of the fact that we have a surplus and it wouldn't have been thrown away. We use all the extra product for whether it's insulation on buildings or for dryer balls or things like that. Another part that I want to point out, I'm just about to move it. You want to watch how it's building on the spindle or bobbin. And uh, we're starting to get to where I need to take that off and you just snip it down there so that now it's going to wind on that part of the uh, bobbin. Another kind of little hack for uh, spinning is one side of the bobbin is always smaller than the other. And what I've done is I've sliced a sour cream lid I might be able to pull it forward here. Just sliced right there, put it around the uh, bobbin and taped it back together so it doesn't come off. And that just allows me to fill an extra quarter inch to half an inch to be more the same height as that one. Um, it does get me uh, quite a few more yards or in my skein uh, when I take it off. But I'm gonna keep going with this and I'm gonna bring you back uh, when I'm just about through. So one of the things I should also show as we're working on this is joining your next bat onto your uh, yarn. Uh, basically, I've come to the end of my uh, first roving and you can see I'm about to run out so I need to attach another one. Uh, so what you do is here you can see the spun part. You're going to pinch your fingers at the bottom of that and just kind of thin it out a little bit thinner than maybe what you would have done if you were still spinning. And then I've got my next roving there ready to go. I know I keep calling them rovings and bats. They're roving at this point. And you just kind of put it in there and mush it in with your hands. Make sure you've got, I usually try and make sure I'm overlapping good 10 inches uh, that just seems to mesh them well together. I kind of pinch it and hold it here with my hand. I'm going to get my spinning wheel going again. This is going to create a bit of backspin because I'm not backspin. Over, you're, you're basically over spinning it so you got an extra twist. Uh, so keep that finger pinched and get it going till you got a nice little bit of spin and you'll see when I let go it just zooms on and now we are connected. So then you just go into your regular spinning just as you were and it's that easy. And here you see I've just come to the end of the first one and I'm on to the next one. It's very, very soothing. I like to do this at night before bed. <laughs> it makes you very relaxed listening to the sound of the wheel. It has been a few days. This is a project that uh, for me, I've never tried to spin a whole sheet fleece all at one time. So this has taken me, I'm going to say three weeks between all other projects, but not, we've got- not, not continuous. Not continuous, no, it's just kind of patchy here and there whenever I get a chance I've been spinning. So uh, I wanted to show quickly the uh, way we take it off of the spinning wheel. And uh, this is my last skein, so I, or last bobbin that I will be using. I've used up all my wash fleece, so um, I figured I would show taking the last one off. We have our finished bobbin here. I kind of really loaded this one up, but I wanted to use the last of that good fleece. And we just take it here. Uh, that is a nitty naughty. Uh, basically, it's kind of a traditional wood tool for spinning uh, that helps you to measure your skein and create it. Uh, every loop around this is one yard of yarn. So we just go, I'll do it slowly, up over and down on the other one, over that side and you're back to the beginning. And that's that. So each one of these now, each side creates a yard. So you've got two yards you want to basically do this kind of as evenly tensioned as possible and that's all there is to it. So we will 
bring you back when we have got this off of the spinning wheel and let you know just how much fleece we got, or just how much yarn and product we got out of this one sheep fleece. Well, we're finally done spinning. Um, I wanted to take the fleece from start to finish for you so you could see just what you got out of a fleece uh, from one of our Icelandic sheeps. Sheeps, <laughs> speak proper English. <laughs> one of our Icelandic sheep. So, so far in this series, we have sheared, we've washed um, and carded, and we are now onto our spinning section. Down here on the table, I have what we were able, I was able to spin out of this Icelandic fleece. Now, hindsight 2020, I probably should have weighed the fleece in the first place to see what we actually started with. Uh, one thing I will say is this was not the best fleece that we have had produced this year on the property. It was, a lot of it was very matted and full of weeds and seeds that I ended up having to discard, so to speak. Anyways, this is what I got out of it as usable products. I ended up with four very nice skeins of lopy yarn, a medium thickness, great for slippers, mittens, that sort of thing, hats. Um, and then I did do one with all my little extra bits that's a little bit finer. Uh, it's probably still not fine enough for socks, really, but it's probably what I would use it for. And I ended up with one dryer ball. I will give you some weights here. I did do some note taking. As you can see, we label each skein with the sheep it came from and the year, whether it was a fall or summer fleece or spring fleece, the amount of yards and the grams weight for each skein. So in total, for what we had spun with the five skeins here, we had 680 grams or 495 yards. Now, in future, I probably want to try and get a little bit better at my spinning to go a little bit thinner, but this is a really, really nice thickness for mittens, as I was saying. So all in all, not too bad. If we put this into perspective for what you would buy in a store, getting my little cheat sheet here, um, it really is a great value. Um, I guess that's the best way to say it. Uh, if I was to buy Icelandic fleece in the shop, a 50 gram ball would range in Canadian from 495 up to 775. So I kind of took an average of that and said $6 a 50 gram ball. So the weight of this fleece, I would have gotten 13 balls. So that's $78 worth of yarn. One thing I did want to show, which I finally got finished. Now they don't look so pretty. But I finally finished my first pair of slipper socks. Uh, I definitely need to do some tweaking and work on my uh, sock knitting skills. But uh, all in all, I'm super impressed with this. This was not from this fleece. This was from a different one. Um, but uh, I had spun this myself into quite a fine yarn. Actually, even finer than the one that I did from this fleece. But in total, these socks, slippers weighed 148 grams. So out of one fleece, just to give you an idea, I could have made four pairs of socks. Um, so that's not too bad. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure we'll have some more in-depth stuff to come. And if anybody has any questions or wants a little bit more information, be sure to drop a comment down below. And uh, definitely subscribe to uh, see all the good little things we get up to.